All right. All right. All right, everyone. Well, good evening. Glad to have everyone joining us today for our uh, Sunday Night Maranatha Prophecy Update. Come on in, guys. Come on in. Come on in. Come on down. Right? <laughs> yeah, the price is right. 
<laughs> it's free, right? It's free for us, right? He who the Son has set free is free indeed. So that's the price. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Glad to have all of you joining us that are watching online uh, this evening as well. Praise the Lord. Really excited about uh, tonight's prophecy update and uh, uh, about our uh, our very special guest and just uh, such a wonderful, wonderful man. Uh, I love uh, I love Brother Don and love the love his wife and his family. They are just honestly. They are just wonderful, wonderful people, and um, so uh, please welcome tonight our guest this evening, Don Perkins. <laughs> uh, Kurt, I'm, I'm honored and privileged to be with you tonight and looking forward to a wonderful time of prophetic study. Uh, we're living in some exciting times, my friend. Man, we sure are. We sure are. Difficult times, yes. Absolutely. But but what makes the difficult times exciting is the fact that we know, we understand that these are harbingers of not just not what's to come, but of who's to come. And that's Absolutely. Uh, Jesus, our Savior and Lord. So praise the Lord for that. And Absolutely. Um, Man, we we sure have we we got a lot to talk about. There's always more to talk about than we have time to talk, you know. Right. But right. Uh, uh, but the Holy Spirit leads. So uh, so praise the Lord for that. Well, why don't we just open up with a word of prayer? And uh, if the sound booth could turn up, Brother Don, for me just a little bit, and uh, let's just open up with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you uh, for this evening, our time that we get to spend together, Lord, that we get to talk, Lord. We it's just always so good, Lord to come together as the body of Christ, those that are here along with our brothers and sisters online as well. May you bless our time, Lord. May you bless um, the time that uh, that Don and I just have uh, just uh, in discussion this evening. And we just lift it up to you in Jesus name. And all God's church said, amen. 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 All right. Well, I think we got a rowdy crowd tonight over here. Man, <laughs> <laughs> I know you guys are rowdy. All right. Well, praise the Lord. Okay. Well, you know, we're going to really just start off with talking about the thing that's on everyone's mind. I mean, everyone around the world, whether you know Jesus <coughs> or don't know Jesus, everyone around the world is talking about what's going on in Israel, which I find, you know, it's really interesting, Don, don't you think, that, you know, Israel is always in focus. Israel, Absolutely. I mean, tiny little, I mean, otherwise would be considered, like, insignificant. Uh, but Israel is far from insignificant. Israel is very significant because God has made her very significant. And so, um, man, there's just so much that's been, uh, been going on. Um, I definitely want to hear, you know, what's on your heart today for uh, for the church and um, and just as the Holy Spirit uh, uh, leads and everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, But uh, why don't we first start off with some of these developments of uh, uh, of end times uh, significance here. And let's talk about, um, you know, I'd like to get your thoughts and your perspective on. Uh, what has taken place, what has transpired uh, from um, uh, on yesterday uh, in Israel yes. there. And just uh, just go for it. Just share. Uh, we want to hear what you got to say about all this. Well, again, I mean, I know everybody, everyone was riveted like I was yesterday in reference to uh, just the, the gall and the, uh, the, the just the, I mean, what Iran did. I mean, uh, unprecedented in, in history. Uh, I mean, I know you've been following the news, and I think the counts now up to 350 uh, ballistic missiles and uh, the drones. So you know, inner, you know, be, you know, between the two, but 350 uh, missiles were literally sent to Israel. Uh, uh, they literally attacked the nation of Israel, and again, I think they made a very grave mistake uh, in doing that. I mean, they've really opened up the door now, where Israel uh, can literally go back into uh, their arsenal and uh, attack the actual land of Iran. I mean, they've been attacking Syria, you know, they've been hitting Syria at different times, and then, uh, you know, uh, Hezbollah up in up in the north, and then uh, Hamas, but now uh, they're, going, they're going to go after the, the puppet master, if you want to call it, uh, Iran. And then, I mean, what they're talking about now is that uh, Israel now literally has a right uh, to go after some of the nuclear facilities. I mean, um, 
you know, with Iran, for them to do this, uh, this shows the world that if Iran had a nuclear weapon, that they would use it. And Absolutely. again, so Israel right now has to set them back. Uh, he, they, they really have to set them back now. And now they have, they have the, they have the, the go ahead to do that in a sense because now they're going to retaliate against them. Uh, I know Israel had to do what they did when they took out uh, the generals the other day, but these guys, they have a lot of blood on their hands. And anytime Israel has a chance to get them, uh, they will do that. I mean, they've even even attacked, uh, not attacked, but they've actually assassinated many of the nuclear uh, scientists that's involved in, in helping Iran to go nuclear. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've done that to protect Israel. But I mean, Israel has a history of protecting the nation like that. I remember uh, way back when Saddam Hussein had ambitions to go uh, and, and actually have a nuclear a nuclear bomb and facility as well. Uh, one day was there, the next day uh, Israel obliterated, I mean, I mean, just totally decimated it. Uh, uh, Israel took it out. Uh, and Israel has to protect the nation. And, you know, what we saw yesterday was amazing uh, with all the different technology, you know, uh, uh, the Iron Dome, uh, the, the Iron Beam, which is their laser one, uh, David Sling, uh, amazing, amazing technology. And uh, not only Israel, but also the, the nations that literally formed a, a, a group of protection uh, in that region of the U.S., uh, I think French, uh, uh, who has, I think Germany was involved. Uh, even uh, Jordan, uh, the Jordanians shot down missiles that came over their airspace. Mm -hmm. uh, and from what I've, what I've been told, that none of those missiles actually made it to Israel. Uh, and again, uh, what we've seen was just an amazing, an amazing event. But I think now that it has escalated, uh, Israel will respond. And I do believe uh, that they're going to respond big. It's going to be big. Uh, just like what they've, doing, what they've done to Hamas. I mean, Hamas came in. Uh, October 7th, they did what they did. Now Israel, I mean, they they hitting them hard. And, uh, you know, I think that our current administration needs to support whatever, whatever Israel has to do to to set Iran back, uh, you know, where they cannot do this again. Uh, so, again, we're looking at some amazing, amazing things. Yeah, absolutely. And, of course, the United States involved, Britain involved. Yes, uh, Britain. Saudi Arabia also yes. involved and yes. that is really really uh amazing and significant guys and <clears throat> we're going to get into that here in just a little bit as well because that one for me uh that was a a, a very interesting uh little tidbit and development you know it's really interesting when and and, and we're going to kind of go kind of back and forth on some of this here but with um um israel and when we look at the Gog Magog War, Ezekiel 38, uh, mm -hmm. an event that is yet to take place on the prophetic, prophetic timeline, um, we know, well, let me, let me word it to you this way. When Iran comes against Israel in that attack, so, so I've been saying for the past couple of days, guys, listen, <clears throat> Israel is going to survive this. We know she's going to survive this. Absolutely. Because you got to have an Israel uh, for there to be the Antichrist uh, uh, covenant with Israel in Daniel 9. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we know that, <laughs> an, uh, that Israel is going to survive this and Israel is going to be consequential. We know uh, as well that Iran is going to survive it because, again, of Ezekiel 38. Yes. You know, yes. They're going to have they're going to have a bloody nose. Yes. Uh, Iran will for sure. Uh, but Iran is going to survive this. But it's mm -hmm. interesting because you had mentioned um, what you think may be the possibility of Israel going after, directly going after uh, Iran's nuclear sites. And, and I, I, that is an interesting uh, thought, and I tend to agree. It wouldn't surprise me if Israel uh, had done that, because exactly what you said, if, um, if Iran had an operational nuclear weapon, she would have used it for certain. She has Absolutely. been threatening that. Look, she is at, she is the, Iran is the head of the snake, like Netanyahu has been saying. She's the mm -hmm. head of the snake and the head, the, the snake wants to strike. Okay. Yes. But she's moving towards uh, that technology. She has enough of, of 
of nuclear material uh, from what we understand or what's been made public to make 10, I believe it is, 10 uh, nuclear warheads. But mm -hmm. it's one thing to have the technology to get there, um, you know, the uranium and plutonium and all these kinds of things, okay? It's another thing to be able to get that um, on a, uh, a, a missile and to be mm -hmm. able to deliver that, okay? Yeah. Uh, there's yeah. a whole other set of technologies to be able to do that. Uh, yeah. And you don't want to make a mistake with that, or guess what? You got that falling in your own territory. So, Absolutely. But and you know, you, you know, uh, uh, Kurt, I also believe this too that that Israel, I believe they know uh, exactly where every one of those nuclear sites are located. You know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. Israel has spies all in the land. I guarantee they do. Uh, they know just how far our, Iran has gone as far as their capabilities of going nuclear. And I do believe that Israel will not allow that. You know, and again, uh, as, as you mentioned, you know, because of Ezekiel 30 and 39, we do know that Iran will be. I, I like how you said that she may have a bloody nose. And what I mean by that, uh, what I take that to mean is that, again, Israel is going to set them back a little bit. Uh, we do know that in the Ezekiel 30, 30 war, 30, 39 war, uh, you know, it's going to be headed up by Russia, you know, right. by and and, and uh, Iran and Turkey and all these other nations that Ezekiel talk about will literally uh, come alongside uh, Russia during that time. They won't be the head nations leading it out. I mean, Russia's going to do it. Right. Uh, but Iran will be around, but she may have a bloody nose. And I think uh, Israel is going to is going to do that because, uh, you know, Israel cannot allow them to go nuclear, especially after what they've just done. Uh, you, you hit Israel once, they're going to hit you harder. You know what I mean? And uh, thank God that they had the technology uh, to to stop those missiles from coming in. You know, uh, another another guy, a commentator, was making a point that, you know, could it be that that Iran was just trying to save face because uh, they know they cannot they cannot win a war with Israel. And uh, they sent these uh, these long range uh, drones. I mean, it took them hours to get to Israel, which gave them time to shoot every one of them down. Uh, but the fact that they did it was was just amazing. And uh, so now, again, Israel is going to they're going to they're going to do what they have to do uh, to set Iran back. And uh, I think this strike is going to be a big one going back. I think the U.N. just voted to condemn Iran uh, uh, a little while ago today, I think it was. And uh, which I was surprised that they did that. But they had to uh, because this was an all out attack against a sovereign nation. Uh, and one other thing you said too, uh, 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 Kurt, that, you know, we don't worry about it. We don't really worry about what is happening in the sense of losing sleep about it. You know, I, I never worry about uh, Putin's cyber, uh, uh, saber rattling. Uh, I do not worry about China uh, in reference to what they want to do, you know. And the reason why is because we have a sovereign guard in control. Uh, you say that Israel is going to be here. We know that because based on prophecy. So because of what God has put in the scripture, uh, we can rest uh, tr uh, uh, and feel so comfortable that a sovereign God has everything under control. Uh, Israel is going to be here based on scripture. You know, God has tied that little nation to the universe. You know, in, in Jeremiah chapter 31, 35 through 36, uh, he, he gave that wonderful prophecy. He said that if you can, uh, you know, if you can stop the ordinances of the sun, moon and stars from rising and coming up, he said, then Israel would cease from being a nation. Right. Well, when I woke up this morning, uh, I saw the sun out there. It tells me that the nation of Israel is going to be here. God tied this little nation to the heavens. Amen. And he also said, if you can go to heaven and measure the length of heaven, then I would get rid of Israel. Now, I don't know any man here on earth that can go to heaven and measure the expanse of heaven. Uh, God gave two things that was impossible for man to do to show that Israel, that little sovereign nation is going to be here till the end. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God is, God is faithful. You know? Absolutely. God Absolutely. is faithful. Praise, I mean, praise God. Uh, praise God for that, you know. Absolutely. And, uh, uh, and, and you know, it's interesting because um, we don't see uh, any utilization of nukes in Ezekiel 38. Okay? Right. And right. if anyone would be trigger happy to utilize them, it would be the Iranians. So um, could there be just some kind of enforcement from the uh, from Russia uh, and pretty much trying to enforce them from not using it? I don't know. I think that it's more likely that they won't have the ability to do so because um, there may very well be, as you're saying, they just may be so set back. Now, I believe that. I now, believe that. Oh, yeah. And there is so much talk right now, all right? And, and let's clear the air with this, 
Um, mm-hmm. There is so much talk right now. Well, Iran did this against Israel because she had to, because she felt that <clears throat> she had to face a safe face and that she was justified because of what happened in Syria a couple weeks ago. Right. Okay. No. And that yeah. is far from the truth. Go Absolutely. Ahead. I'd like your perspective on that first. Well, you know, those generals had blood on their hand. I mean, uh, those were enemies of Israel. Uh, they even have um, had American blood on their hands. And, uh, you know, each one of those guys that are part of that, they are a threat. Uh, and Israel had to take them out. I mean, all Israel did was was uh, was cut some of the tentacles off the head of the snake, if you want to call it. Right. And, uh, you know, these men, they had blood on their hands and Israel went after the enemies. Uh, Israel has always done that. And Israel will continue to do that. Uh, even uh, when President Trump uh, went after the I mean, the head kingpin. Uh, of the Iranian, I think it was, I don't know if it was the National Guard, whatever it was, but he was the, uh, uh, Suleimani, was that his name, I think? Uh, yes. I forgot which one it was, but but uh, President Trump took him out uh, because that man has so much blood on his hand as well. Oh, yeah. And so uh, Iran has been, you know, I mean, they got some very evil men out there. And uh, these are the guys that are literally the ones that that are pushing the buttons for Hezbollah and, and Hamas and the Houthis and all these different groups. Uh, so they had to take them out. And uh, Israel did that to protect themselves, you know. So uh, whether whether they want to say that that they are defending themselves, that that is that is not true. I mean, Israel, Israel is defending themselves because these people are the, are the ones who are calling uh, all of the shots in regards to Hamas, yes. uh, Hezbollah the Houthis and all the other different groups that are attacking Israel. So Israel took them out. Right. And Israel had every right to. And what absolutely what they were doing, um, uh, not Israel, but uh, but those ones that Israel attacked and killed there in Damascus, they look, guys, what Iran was doing is nothing short of genocide. It was it was all genocidal. All right. Um, so, I, I mean, you know, the, Israel says never forget. Right. Right. And how easy <laughs> the world can uh, can forget. <clears throat> yes. Excuse me. But now we have to understand something here as well. So Israel. Uh, well, we believe it. You know, it's kind of like wink, wink, nudge, nudge. We all know that it was Israel that that. Uh, that yes. Did yes. That. Um, OK, even though they won't necessarily come right out and say that. But um, <clears throat> but everyone knows. So uh, it's 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 the secret that every, that everyone's aware of. OK, but uh, how can Israel go into Syria and and do that? Because Syria was harboring them, first yes. of all. Second of all, let's understand something. The <clears throat> the embassy there in Damascus, Syria still stands. Right. It right. still stands and it is still operational if you want to be technical it was the building directly next to it which is absolutely amazing i mean it's it's so close guys i mean you know i mean (laughs) you the 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 guy in the window next at the embassy could sneeze and you'd say you know gesundheit and i mean i mean it's like right there and that building comes down in his rubble but the embassy still stands so let's understand the embassy is there the embassy itself technically was not attacked uh, yes but there were those that were attacked. Now, let's understand something as well. And I, I, I forget the exact um, uh, how they what they call this here at the U.N. But uh, according to the U.N., OK, mm-hmm. according to the U.N., listen, Israel had every look. I don't know if Israel, if the U.N. is coming right out and saying this. OK, but according mm-hmm. to how the United Nations works. All right. That the men that were killed by uh, by the Israelis there in Damascus, Syria, in the building right next door to yes. the embassy right there, they did not have diplomatic immunity. And this is why you cannot have diplomatic Im- immunity, even if it was in the embassy itself. If those right. men were in the embassy, Israel could have attacked. OK, yes. because yes. you cannot have diplomatic immunity in an embassy or the building next to the embassy if you are literally making plans for war. Mm-hmm. OK, making plans for war, making plans for terrorist attack. That is exactly what was going on there. OK, yes. then you yes. are not a diplomat any longer. OK, 
you are a, a you're a warmonger. You're an enemy. You're, you're a, a warrior. threat. You're a, yeah. Yes. So that is how that works. So because of what Israeli intelligence knew was taking place right there, just the very nature of the ones that were gathered there alone, mm -hmm. okay, that was not anything that allows for United Nations diplomatic immunity. So Israel had every right, and they should have, and they did, to go in and to take those lives. So when Israel tries, or when Iran tries to say, well, you guys, look, we're just, because of what you guys initiated. No, you guys initiated that under yes. the guise of diplomatic immunity, which it was not. It Absolutely. Not. And then not only that, too, but what they've done with Hamas and also Hezbollah, you know, and uh, but I really think, again, I mean, I, I keep thinking about this. I mean, I mean, if they really wanted to surprise Israel, they could have done it, uh, you know, in the north out of uh, Lebanon. Uh, again, I, I really believe as some of the some of the uh, the talking heads, you want to call it, uh, agree that uh, they did this to save face. The Ayatollahs, they did it right. to save face. Uh, and they sent these long range missiles over there to give them time to knock it down. And then they saying, OK, now it's done. We, we done. Uh, but they stirred up a bear, my friend. Uh, it's not done because Israel is going to take it to a next a next level. Uh, they have to stop their nuclear capabilities. Uh, and I really believe that they're going to do that. I really I really believe that. So uh, what we're seeing right now is just amazing. Uh, again, like you said, this little old nation uh, is on the lips of the world again. Uh, Israel has taken over the news cycles. Now, e every network is talking about Israel again. And I've said many times that whenever you mention the name Israel, you mentioning Bible prophecy, because the fact that we have Israel back as a nation again is prophetic. Uh, you know, God said that he would bring that nation back into world history. And this is exactly what he's done. Uh, these commentators on the news, uh, as they mention that name, they literally giving glory to God and don't even realize <laughs> it. You know, Israel has awesome. to be here in order for us to get to the end of the story. Uh, I, so this is exciting. I love that. I love it. You know what? I, I never thought of it from that perspective, Don. But mm -hmm. every time they mention Israel, they are giving glory to God. They don't even Absolutely. realize it. And they are declaring Bible prophecy. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Because Israel just shouldn't be. There's nothing like yes. this has ever happened in, in, in history. We talked about this recently. It's just yes. absolutely phenomenal. And they don't even realize it. You don't know? even realize it. They, they, they don't even realize it. And, and guys, listen, when you look at the time, look, it's called the time of Jacob's trouble, which is coming upon the world, right? Yes, so look, yes. Israel, this is what I've been saying for a long time, Don. Israel is the focus of the time yes. of Jacob's trouble, right? Absolutely. Israel is the focus. The whole world is affected, but Israel is the focus there. Mm -hmm. And and when we understand that, then that means if if the world is getting close, if the stage is being set, okay, mm -hmm. you begin to connect the dots, right? And yes. it's getting close to that time, then you would expect to see Israel more and more and more coming into focus. And yes. that is exactly what we are seeing, guys. So we are seeing the setup for the things that we read about uh, from uh, the Apostle John and the prophets and all of that. Yes. And that yes. is the reason why, like you start off saying, that's the reason why we're so excited. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I'll say one other thing, too. I don't know if you mentioned it in some of your past programs. I mean, uh, some of the news also that have come out of late in regards to Hamas. Uh, another reason that Hamas went into uh, Israel on October 7th was because of the five red heifers yes. uh, that actually yes. came into the land. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these Hamas, they are afraid of these red heifers because they realize that uh, if Israel sacrificed a red heifer, then these 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 uh, these Jews are bent on restoring the third temple. Uh -huh. Now, again, what's so significant about that? Again, it's just another one of those things to add to the overall pot uh, of what's going on in the land. There's so much that's happening in Israel as preparation for the end times. Uh, again, that is, it's just it's almost hard to keep up with it. But. When these five red, red heifers came into the land, and a lot of people didn't realize that, but Hamas actually admitted that, uh, that, you know, uh, because of those red heifers coming to the land, that was one of the reasons, uh, again, to go into Israel. Uh, and uh, But again, you know, a sovereign God is in control. Uh, God's going to allow, I think, from what I've heard of late, uh, four, where one has been disqualified, there are four now. And I think, if I've heard, if I've heard right, uh, that they are qualified now to actually sacrifice. 
And uh, they were concerned about Israel doing it uh, around the Passover time uh, this year. Uh, and uh, so we're going to see, you know, I mean, but if they didn't do it, we know that. But I'm saying they they are they're talking about, you know, Israel actually sacrificing uh, one of those red heifers. And if they do that, they have the ashes. Then they can they can bring in this third temple. So we are witnessing things that are in preparation for the time of Jacob's trouble during the tribulation. Uh, Israel, they want to rebuild that temple. Uh, I really believe that things are falling into place. Now, on the other side of that coin, we in the church, what we are witnessing as we see these events happen in Israel, to me, it should really uh, spark an urgency in our heart uh, as the church, as the body of Christ, to go after the harvest. Uh, I do believe, uh, Kurt, that that our time in the church age is coming fastly to a close. Uh, what's going to close the church age is that time known as the rapture of the church. Now, again, there are no signs for the rapture. All the signs and indicators point to the second coming of Christ. But if we're seeing indicators that point to the second coming, you're seeing events that's going to set up the tribulation. All of those events point to the second coming, the literal return of Christ back to Israel. If we're seeing signs and indicators that point there, it lets us know that the rapture is even closer. In turn, to me, that puts an urgency on my heart to go after the harvest. Right. You know, uh, we need to we, we need to look at the signs as a motivator uh, to allow God to use us to reach as many people as we can uh, before you know before time time is up. And, and again, I do believe that it is literally that close. Now, I would never date said uh, uh, anybody do. You need to get from around them. Uh, I would never date said, but I would I would definitely say that I believe we are closer now than we have ever been because what we are witnessing in preparation in the land of Israel, which is a, a major sign for the for the time of great tribulation. Man, so true, so true. And hey, I, you know, it, and and with all that being said, so so what you're saying, Don, is that that because of the nearness of the hour. There's even more of a sense of urgency on Absolutely. the part of the church. Right? Yes. On the part yes. of the church. It's kind of like, you know, uh, there's certain seasons that are good planting seasons. You know, if you're going to plant grass, right? Mm -hmm, you know that mm -hmm. spring is good. Uh, and I'll say at least here in, in Vegas that even fall is actually technically even better because mm -hmm. it gives a little bit of a rest time there through the uh, winter months and then for the next uh, for the next spring and everything. But but listen, there's a sense of urgency. You got to get those seeds planted before it becomes too hot because mm -hmm. once it becomes too hot what's going to happen some of those seeds are going to start to spurt up and then that extreme heat at least here in las vegas and dry heat and it's just going to zap them you know mm -hmm. so it's all mm -hmm. the harder so if you're going to be planting a uh, seed right to grow in in vegas for grass you need to do it in early spring very early Absolutely. spring why mm -hmm. because you know that there is a sense of urgency because you know the time that is coming guys mm -hmm. okay yeah. so hey I, I mean i've got i've got a question for you for you i, I got a question don uh yes. for you um as well do you look at all of this as end of the world alarmist type of stuff it, it, like okay. you know, like we should be all like fe like we're fear mongering when we're talking about these things anyone look at this as as fear mongering well, I'm, I'm really glad you said that because again i think that is one of the misnomers of bible prophecy because uh, a lot of people look at especially prophecy teachers as you you guys are all doom and gloom guys uh, everything you talk about is negative. Everything you talk about, you know, is just just a, a horrible time that's coming. But it's, it's based on perspective. OK, you need to look at it based on the prophetic word. Uh, we're in a dispensation known as the church age. So in that time, God has allotted a certain time that he's going to use the body of Christ to reach uh, reach the world. Amen. But then you have the next dispensation, which is the time of tribulation. Now, during that time. Jesus said the tribulation will be a time that this world has never, ever seen, nor never, ever see again. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that, we know we have the millennial kingdom, which is a, a thousand years of peace. So we're looking at dispensations and see, it depends on how people are interpreting the end times. Uh, you know, the doom and gloom, there will be doom and gloom during the tribulation, but that, that won't last forever. Uh, you have a thousand year uh, millennial kingdom where Christ is going to rule on planet Earth. That's going to be a thousand years of peace. This is after the time of great tribulation, which which is going to try the world. 
uh, it's perspective. It's how people look at it. You know, some people don't want to, they don't want to study the book of Revelation. They don't want to hear a prophecy message because they think that all of it is doom and gloom. And it is not. Uh, as a matter of fact, the end of the book, the end of prophecy ends with eternal bliss for the redeemed. You know, I challenge Christians all the time. I say, you need to read all the way to the end of the book. Uh, don't just stop during the time of tribulation, which is a time of test. Now, don't get me wrong. It's going to be very hard for people in the tribulation. Uh, Jesus said a time this world has never seen nor never, ever see again. But we got to go past the tribulation because where we're going to go, it's going to be a beautiful time in the millennial kingdom. You know, the millennium is a precursor to the eternal, uh, eternal world. Uh, Christ is going to give us a little small taste of what it's going to look like when we go into the eternal state. And we know based on scripture, he puts a thousand year time limit uh, on the millennium because he haven't fully dealt with sin yet. But when we get to the end of the story, the end of the Bible, Revelation 21, 22, it's going to be eternal bliss for the redeemed. That's right. It doesn't end in doom and gloom. And again, you know, Bible prophecy has really gotten a black eye because uh, it's, it's how people, their perspective on it. You know, uh, I think I may have mentioned on your program before that uh, for me to be teaching Bible prophecy, there's a God in heaven. Because I was always taught all my life in church, believe it or not, as a young kid in church, I was taught that if you study the book of Revelation, you could lose your mind. So uh, <laughs> from my childhood going up until I got saved as a young adult, uh, the book of Revelation always was a negative to me. It always had a negative, negative connotation. And again, this is how many people look at look at the end time prophecy. You know, I, I don't want to watch the news. I don't want to hear about Israel. I, you know, it's perspective. If you look at it based on prophetic word, you'll have a different different piece. Uh, I've said many times across the country and even internationally, as I teach, uh, I've said, you know, you're looking at a preacher, an evangelist, a teacher, Bible teacher who sleeps good every night. Even though you got all this crazy stuff that's going on in the world, what we're seeing, uh, Kurt, is exactly what Jesus said in the latter days. Those indicators he gave in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the signs of the times, those are some very negative indicators. But all of those indicators point to the only answer uh, that's going to help planet Earth, which is Jesus Christ. All of those negatives point to a positive of the return of Jesus Christ coming back to set up his millennial kingdom. It's not going to be this negative forever. You know, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Truly, we're living in some tough times right now, but uh, I sleep good every night because a sovereign God is in control. Amen. Amen. And, you know, we, we, we are continuously through the word reminded of his love, reminded of his sovereignty and so mm -hmm. many other things. So yes. for, for all of us, all of these things, it just reinforces stuff. You know, I, I had someone <clears throat> I had someone write in. Uh, from a uh, from another country and and without giving any any specifics saying that all of of this kind of teaching is highly speculative <laughs> highly speculative and 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 said that this so-called prophetic nonsense has been around for decades prophet guys <laughs> prophetic not and this and, and and this individual is a leader as a leader mm -hmm. um uh in another part of the world Yes. Uh, well, <laughs> in the body of Christ, a leader in the body yeah, of Christ. Uh, right. All of this so-called prophetic nonsense has been around for decades. I'm like, yeah. you've got to be kidding me now. Well, he called it nonsense because I believe he don't understand it. No. You know, uh, whether they fully grasp it or not, or whether it's nonsense to them, prophecy is marching on. The fact that Israel is back in world history is a fulfillment of the word of God. Right. You know, whether whether they understand it or not, whether they like it or not, whether they grasp it or not, God does not care. Prophetic word, his prophetic word is going to come to pass. Amen. Uh, you can call it speculative if you want. Uh, it's going to come to pass. We are literally witnessing. Here's one other thing about Israel. Uh, Zechariah 12 uh, says that Jerusalem will be a cup of trembling in the world, in the latter days. In other words, God gives you like a, like a cup of coffee that's trembling. You can't drink it because it's unstable. He said, not only that, but I'm going to make Jerusalem a burdensome stone to the world. In other words, I'm going to make the uh, Jerusalem a burden to the world. Again, this is what we actually see. We're literally seeing this prophecy come to pass before our very eyes. This little nation is on the lips of the world as a burden. Mm -hmm. And then God even said, he said, those that try to stabilize the cup or those that try to grab this burden that God says he's going to tear them in pieces. 
In other words, he's not going to, you know, men, men who try to bring peace to Israel, they can't do it. Uh, the only way that Israel is going to have peace is when Messiah sits on the throne. And see, uh, Kurt, we've been commanded by God to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, Amen. Psalm 122, 6. Amen. When we pray that prayer, we are literally praying for the millennial reign of Christ. Because that's the only time this little nation that's in, in an unstableness right now is going to experience a lasting peace when Messiah sits on the throne of David. Now, again, because a lot of these guys don't understand this, you know, they, they always point out, uh, uh, try to make it a negative or speculative. Uh, you know, God doesn't care about that. I mean, prophecy is marching on. Amen. It's coming to pass whether they like it or not. Amen. Amen. And we're going to get to a video here in a moment, guys. And then I, and, and this video, I want everyone to see this video. We're going to show in a few minutes here. And I want to get your take uh, on this because uh, okay. just just looking at this video, I've watched it and I've watched it. It's it's, it's really interesting having to do with what we're talking about here. It's a short video, but uh, we will get to that here shortly but um but before we get to that let's get back to the fact as you had stated look jordan the country of jordan the airspace was shut down over jordan shut down over saudi arabia not only that but israel what they were shooting down uh drones and all these different kinds of project projectiles and everything uh that were up there and israel was allowed to to be involved uh with the i mean guys this is phenomenal <laughs> phenomenal Absolutely. stuff Yes, it's phenomenal yes. because when we look at Ezekiel chapter 38, it talks about Sheba and Dedan, right? Mm -hmm. They're not yes. going to be coming against Israel and the Gog, Magog. Now, who, by the way, you might be saying who's Sheba and Dedan. That is what is modern day Saudi Arabia. OK, right. um, so that, that's what they used to be called. Now they're called this. OK, so uh, so but um, Saudi Arabia will not be coming with those said nations against Israel in the Gog, Magog, Ezekiel 38, 39 war. But Saudi right. Arabia is going to be pre protesting, saying like, what are y'all doing? doing? Yeah. What's mm -hmm. going yeah. on here, right? right? Well, for that to happen, that means that there has to be some kind of normalization of relations between mm -hmm. Israel and Saudi Arabia, and that has been going on. Actually, it was going on for a couple of years uh, in, in, in backdoor meetings and everything. Yes. And yes. it came out. It came out. What, what is this now? 24, 23? I think maybe around 22 or 22 or 23 when it mm -hmm. actually became more more public as to what's been going on um, in backdoor meetings and everything. So, guys, once again, this is significant because mm -hmm. How do we know that we're getting near? Okay, I've actually heard pastors tell me, well, you know, I, yeah, it can happen. Who knows when it's going to happen? Maybe our lifetime, maybe not. You've got to be kidding me, man. <laughs> like, are you, do you have your head in the sand? Like, seriously. They do. Seriously, no, seriously, because because <laughs> look, Jesus even said, well, we see all, the, all these different things. You know, the time is near. Guys, we know the time is, is getting near. We know the time uh, is close. We, we're seeing things uh, as we read in the word. There has to be the setup. So is there the setup with Saudi Arabia? Yes. And mm -hmm. just what happened yesterday is prime example. Saudi Arabia did not join Lebanon did not do right. because it was not just Iran that was that was shooting these projectiles. It was also Lebanon. It was also coming from Iraq. They were also coming from Yemen, uh, uh, Yemenese territory in Yemen mm -hmm. there. OK, yes, but not from Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia was helpful. This is significant. Yes. This yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And again, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's going on in Saudi Arabia that people don't even know about. I mean, their relationship with Israel uh, you know, what they do under the, the, the radar, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, Iran is a threat to Saudi Arabia as well. Uh, Saudi Arabia does not want Iran to get nukes because they know that I, Iran would literally use them on Saudi Arabia as well. Right. So behind yes. the scenes, I'm quite sure they're saying, Israel, do what you have to do to take them out. You know what I mean? And uh, there are backdoor things that's happening, you know, right now uh, that a lot of people don't know about how they are cooperating with Israel uh, against a common enemy, which is Iran. So again, we, we are witnessing witnessing some amazing things here, you know. And again, I look I look again at at the fact that this little nation is is here again. Back in world history, to me says says it all. 
you know, uh, and, and, you know, a lot of people say that this has been going on for decades and all this stuff. But see, the problem, though, or, or the difference is we have Israel back as part of the, you know, most scholars call Israel the, the uh, uh, God's major prophetic piece. You know what I mean? Uh, Israel was that piece of the puzzle. You, you know how you put a puzzle together and then you got one little piece you've been waiting on. Once you click that one piece in, then all the other parts of that puzzle fits in. Well, Israel was that one piece of puzzle for decades that we were waiting on, that, that, that the prophetic puzzle was waiting on. And now that Israel has been popped into the puzzle, now other parts of the prophecies can begin to click in, which again is a game changer. You know, again, these guys talk about, you know, this stuff been going on for decades and decades and specu speculation, all that. The, the, the difference is we have the nation of Israel now that we didn't have decades ago. You, you follow me? Right. Uh, Israel now is, is a sovereign nation back in, in world history. Uh, we didn't have the plans for the red, uh, red I mean, for the uh, third temple. We have that now. Yes, uh, Israel, uh, uh, for 2,500 years, they didn't have the religious body, which is which is the Sanhedrin. Now Israel has the, the religious Sanhedrin governing body, uh, which is going to be that same body that's going to basically anoint the next high priest. Uh, uh, now, they have, now they're training young Jewish boys in, in ancient uh, and and uh, and animal sacrificing. Right. You know, you got all these different things that have now come into play, that that no other uh, season of time or decades before has had uh, outside of what we are witnessing today. So that is a game changer. Uh, this is how we know that we are living in the end times. You know, Dr. Reagan says this all the time. He said we're living on borrowed time. You know, he believes it's that close. You know. And I, I would agree with him because what we are witnessing, you know, I've said already, as we're talking here, I said, uh, you know, it's it's almost hard to keep up with everything that's going on. Uh, there are so many things that are transpiring prophetically before our very eyes, which, again, is a game changer for the world. Uh, and again, it should produce an urgency in the body of Christ to get to get busy. It sure should. It sure should. And even as you're mentioning some of these things, right, and they're training the priests and all that. And yes. listen, uh, they've already made the garments for the priests and the garments for the high priest. You can actually yes. view them. They're on yes. display according to biblical specifications. Well, Absolutely. why on earth would they do that? They've already made the crown for the high priest. And it's the, the, the holy mitre. And it says yes. holiness to the holiness to the Lord, I believe is what it Absolutely. says. Absolutely. The they are oh, serious. They are serious about restoring the third temple that that jesus mentioned or alluded to in matthew 24 when he said he told his jewish brother when you see the abomination that makes desolation stand in the holy place when you see it he said flee to the mountains then the apostle paul in thessalonians talked about the antichrist he will sit in the temple of god claiming to be god That's right uh, those are two prophecies that are talking about a future third temple that the antichrist is going to occupy and desecrate now, we are witnessing things that happen in Israel that is a setup for that third temple. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see what is going on. We are living in some amazing times. Uh, and again, the urgency of, urgency of the hour needs to be in our hearts, again, to reach a lost world. I'm going to keep saying that the whole program, that That's the right. church needs to be busy Drive reaching a lost world. Drive it home. And, and absolutely. And again, so Israel is taking all of that seriously and Islam is taking it seriously, which, according absolutely. to what you said, which we already know, because a Hamas spokesperson had come out and already said it on yes. TV that the reason why they attacked Israel is because of the biblical red heifers. Red heifers. Okay? Yes. Okay. So, yes. guys, all of this <laughs> is telling us we're getting close. I can't figure out for the life of me how a Christian can't see it. Okay, can't see it. Well, and that, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Well, again, a lot of them, because they don't really understand the Scripture, you know, uh, you know, because they're looking at it, again, with that negative perspective, they don't want to go into it uh, to really understand what's going on. And, again, uh, I've said many times, I can tell a Christian I don't know the future by how the present time affect them. You know, if they're anxious and concerned about everything, a lot of times they don't fully understand what the Bible has laid out as far as as far as prophecy. You know, but when you when you get a full over uh, view of the end times, you can better see where we are. And again, it's a it's a peace. It gives you peace. You know, the scripture says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times. In other words, when you get God's wisdom and knowledge about the end times, it's going to be a stabilizer. It's going to be a peace Amen. in your times. 
you know, and because we understand where we are, uh, I, I'm not afraid, Kurt. I know you're not afraid. And many prophecy guys that I associate with, right. they're not afraid of the times. And, uh, you know, uh, we realize where we are and therefore a peace and a calm and, and it's an expectation uh, of our Lord's return uh, is ever in front of us, you know. Now, I'm going to say this. It doesn't mean that we're so heavenly minded that we're no earthly good. Uh, I, I say this. When you are heavenly minded or future minded, it makes you a more productive Christian in these times. Uh, yeah. You know, we have a different heart toward the world. Uh, I mean, I go after them, brother. I go after I have a heart for the harvest. I go after them mm. because I realize the urgency, you know, of the of the times. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And hey, I just wanted to say we've got uh, Pete Garcia joining us in the chat tonight. Hey, Pete. All right, Pete. Uh, How you doing, Pete? To, good to see you. Good to see you on here. And uh, yeah, praise the Lord and everyone else. I mean, we got uh, all of our uh, uh, just so many. We got so we got Doug Finn and Patty and Caterlin and Sir Pierce and Carly, our mods and and all this. Handelor, praise the Lord. Um, Hey, you know, one of the things I want to talk about now, and then we're going to get to this video, okay, especially being that we're talking about <laughs> temple stuff, being right. that we're talking about temple stuff, this video, guys, is, it, to me, it's it's significant. I want to see what yes. you guys say. But first, because I'm, I'm just going to make you guys wait. I'm just going to torture you guys. <laughs> I'm torture you. So um, just, just because I can, just because I can, <laughs> you know. Hey, it's been a long day and a long week. I got to have some fun, man. OK, I'm just saying. So. All right. <laughs> but 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 hey, now listen. OK, so the U.S., uh, from what I understand, the U.S. was the first one to make the first shot in shooting down a drone. OK, U.S. is in, is involved in this whole thing. And now I'm going to say one thing and then I'm going to go back on this a bit. OK, so this is what I'm going to say. The U.S. is involved. The U.S. was definitely uh, helping Israel big time. We shot down, I think, around 70 drones or so. Right. Uh, a right. couple of ballistics there, that kind of thing. Um, and, that, and that's great, and that's wonderful. The Word says, I will bless those who bless thee. I will curse those who curse thee. Okay. And I believe, and I shared this this morning, Don, that in my personal but very strong opinion is that the only two good things that we got going for America right now is the presence of the church mm -hmm. is number one. And yes. number two is any support that this country offers toward Israel. OK, I agree. Yes, because I, you remove one or both of those for, from the equation and you are going to watch uh, America go down faster than the Titanic. Well, let me say this. Uh, uh, Grant Jeffrey, uh, do you know Grant Jeffrey? You, you, you've heard of him, right? Yeah. Grant Jeffrey. Uh, Grant Jeffrey, he was a prophecy teacher out of Canada. A great colleague and friend of mine, he made a statement that that I agree wholeheartedly with, and it's going to go li right along with what you just said. He said that as long as the church is here, America will not uh, implode. Uh, he said, but I believe that once America is taken out, I mean, I'm sorry, once the church is taken out, uh, as long as I'm mean, sorry, once the church is taken out, America would would implode. So, in other words, we have been the the the, the saving grace of this nation. Uh, even though this nation has turned our back on God, uh, as long as the church is here, uh, America will be around. Now we do know based on scripture that uh, she won't be that won't be that that superpower that she is today in the future based on prophecy. But as long as the church is here right now, uh, Israel, I mean, uh, America would not implode. Uh, the church is that saving grace. Amen. And then like you also added about what we do to help Israel, God will bless us in that regard. Uh, I'll be honest with you, uh, Kurt. I was so happy to hear uh, that America did uh, help to defend Israel at this time. Uh, I was really glad to hear that we were we were the first to knock down seventy, uh, you know, of those ballistic missiles and and the uh, and the drones. You know, uh, I was glad to hear that. You know, it made me really made me feel good, especially with some of the stuff that have come out. Uh, I think President Biden uh, really wanted Israel to stand down as far as mm -hmm. uh, going into Gaza any further, and and some of the some of the threats that he made to Israel not to do, and mm -hmm. and even with our Senate uh, uh, Schumer. Uh, you know, wanting Netanyahu to be ousted. You know, we don't need to do that. We we don't need to try to control Israel. We need to let let a sovereign God do what He's going to do in that land, and we need to stay out of it as a nation. You know, when we can help, we need to help, which I'm grateful for that. But we don't need to come against Israel or threaten them. 
Uh, every time we do that, the judgment of God, I believe, comes on America. You know what I mean? I am. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. I agree wholeheartedly. Now, so now I just said the good thing here. Okay. All right. I want to give my opinion here. All it's right. a very okay. strong opinion. Look, we I, I had played a video clip, I don't know, about a week or, or, or maybe two weeks ago at the most from uh, Anthony Blinken. Uh, mm -hmm. Really just I mean, it was uh, it was harsh. It was rude uh, against Israel and all these things. We hear some of the things that have come uh, from the White House and all. We know that um, uh, the man that occupies the White House that some people call the president that because um, <laughs> I just I can I can say that right uh, that um, <laughs> we know that he has made it very clear that if Israel goes in to attack Iran now, which they have every right to and they should, because what Iran did was a declaration of war, an Absolutely. unprovoked declaration of war, as you said, against a sovereign nation. They can and they should, and they would be wise to do so, and I believe they will do so. And uh, Biden said, we're not, you know, we're not going to touch this. We're not going to be involved with that whatsoever, uh, whatever that might be. Okay, why did the United States help Israel and I've got two trains of thought on this. Okay, okay, but I want to hear what you say first as to why you think that the United States helped Israel in this right now. Well, one reason I do believe that Israel is an ally uh, of America, and we had to do that because of all of the treaties and different agreements uh, that we had with them. Uh, not only that, but you got other nations uh, as well uh, that are part of this pack uh, and. You know, our administration really had no choice but to help Israel. And then on top of that, uh, Israel is our connection to the Middle East. I mean, Israel is our eyes in the region. Israel is our uh, ally. Uh, and they were literally forced to do it, uh, 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 this administration, you know. And now I know that President Biden has said that we're not going to help them attack uh, Iran. Uh, but what I was glad to hear that they're not going to stop them. I mean, that's a good thing. You know what I mean? So uh, I believe that our nation really had to, uh, even though, you know, some of the things coming out of the White House is not favorable for Israel. Uh, in this instance, they had to uh, because of what was going on. As a matter of fact, some of the news came out, said that the reason why America knew what was going on and is America warned Israel in advance. They said that the Iranians uh, warned or uh, not warned, but told America through Turkey yes. what was about to happen. And uh, again, I, I, I go back to the point again that uh, Turkey did, I mean, uh, Iran did this to save face. And uh, they knew what they were going to do. And they did this through the back channels. You know, uh, they knew what was going to coming, knew what was coming. And then uh, America uh, uh, alerted Israel uh, with all the different things. And again, uh, what, what has happened is what we see right now. I mean, I mean, Israel knew what was going on because the warnings was given to them in advance coming through Turkey to to the United States. Right now. But I will also say that I think that, uh, again, now if we want to speak here about Iran with Iran um, notifying Turkey, Turkey notifying the United States, the United mm -hmm. States notifying Israel of of what's coming. So there's been the whole thing. This is what's been coming from the administration of an imminent attack. OK, yes. Yes. So, OK. However, Iran didn't even need to do so. See, they can make themselves look like, well, see, now we're the we're the nice guy. We're the good guy. We're giving everyone warning so that right. all y'all can get into your bomb shelters and whatever you got to do. Right. OK. But this is what I say to that. I say okay. that's bonk because of this right here. So first of all, cruise missiles travel slow. OK, yes. if, if just for, just think of the word they cruise on. by. Mm -hmm. OK, right. they cruise <laughs> on. by. So it takes it takes a while for those cruise mm -hmm. missiles to get from Iran to uh, to the borders of Israel. Not mm -hmm. only that, but these kamikaze drones are even right. slower than that. OK, mm -hmm. so it's just like it's coming. It's coming. OK, well, I think we still got some time. Let's go get a coffee. Let's go to the coffee shop. <laughs> let's, uh, you know, uh, let's go get a falafel uh, or mm -hmm. whatever it might be. You know what I'm saying? They had time. I mean, I mean, for crying out loud, even Amir Safadi, you know, yes. he's there and he's given a report about this and everything. And he's just like, right. you know, it's just like, here we go. Yeah. I mean, I mean, guys, so so they didn't even have to do that because as soon yes. as those things launch. 
um, all of our systems, all of uh, Israel's systems know that those are in the yes. sky and in the air, and it takes X amount of time for, for those things to reach there. So Iran didn't need to do that. It's just trying mm -hmm. to make it look like the good guy. Okay. Right. Right. So, right. 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 So, I agree with that as well. Yeah. I mean, again, you know, uh, getting back to the point again, I, I just agree that they that that they were trying to save face with all of the, the things that was happening right. in the land. Uh, really, Iran really is no competition to Israel. Oh, I mean, as far as war, uh, they really don't want to fight Israel. I mean, Israel is a nuclear nation in the Middle East. Uh, this is one reason why a lot of these other nations haven't attacked Israel, because they know that, uh, they cannot defeat Israel. I mean, Israel right. drop a bomb, boom, it's done. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, now a lot of people was wondering whether this is going to cause uh, Isaiah 17 with Damascus. Right. It, you know, will that be the fulfillment? Will this cause that to take place? Damascus uh, being wiped off the map, you know? I mean, every time something happened like that, they always think about that. Uh, right. I've seen a lot of other uh, writers talk about it, you know? So again, we're in a volatile time uh, that the word of God talked about. And again, we just got to have a biblical perspective in order to understand and in order to have peace during these times. Amen. Amen. So so now I'm going to give very briefly my perspective on the reasoning why the why I believe that the U.S. administration had done this. We okay. are in an election year. Absolutely. And 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 uh, Joe, um, you know, uh, ice cream eating uh, gets uh, gets tucked in and in, in bed at night Biden okay look he is not doing good in the polls and he is gonna need every single man woman child illegal cat dog and hamster to vote for him okay mm -hmm. guys mm -hmm. and dead people oh yeah and dead people and some <laughs> people and some people where they somehow can vote multiple multiple times I don't know where I'm getting this from just <laughs> just thinking of okay but okay so he needs as much of the Jewish vote as he can get. Guys, yes. election years affect everything in policy for any country, especially for, for the United States. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's part of my, of my track on this, Don. Mm -hmm. my, the other part of my track is somewhere where you were, you were also going that, look, this is strategic, a strategic move for the United States. Guys, the United States uh, it does what is in the interest of the United States. Mm -hmm. And if it makes it look like we're good, like we're helping someone else, then we'll get the credit for that too. Okay. But, but listen now, guys, the United States is only going to do what is in our best interest. And if things get out of control right now in the Middle East, like we're already talking about gas, <clears throat> about gas going up, Already. It's already right. been going up, right? Gas going up even more as a result of the uncertainty because we all know that Israel is going to attack Iran. Things are going to get worse. How bad? We don't know there. Okay. Right. So, so that is bad. A bad economy is bad for a re-election. Yes, okay. absolutely. A bad economy absolutely. is bad for a re-election. War in the Middle East is bad for a re-election. Uh, if there are issues in the Straits of Hormuz from Iran, that is bad for the election. OK, mm -hmm. so I think that all of those things are involved uh, components. I think that the U.S. is looking out for the U.S. much more than it's really looking out um, for Israel there. That's just my strong opinion. All right. That's my strong opinion. <laughs> OK, I all agree right. with that as well. <laughs> OK, so now. Oh, yeah, we got a video. There's a video. OK, so <laughs> now, guys. I'm interested what, what what everyone has to say. Why you think that I think that this video is something that is is interesting and and could be important in this whole thing. And so I'm just going to put this out. Remember, we are anticipating Israel to attack Iran. Iran has said, if you do that, then expect you know who knows what to come from us, right? <clears throat> this is video that was taken over Jerusalem as all of this was going on. But just just watch this. If you can turn that up back there. Can you all see it on the screens? Okay, good.
all of this over not just Israel, not just Jerusalem, but literally this is going over the Temple Mount area. Dome of the Rock Mosque, Al-Aqsa Mosque, okay? Just, just look at this. This is interesting. This is incredible. Because I did a search, I did a search on this this morning, and I found, and I found exactly what I thought I would find. So there you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I think this could be incredibly interesting. <laughs> okay. So um, I would like to hear um, first your <laughs> your take on on not just what we saw happen, but let me put this out there, what could have happened, and then what would have happened after what could have happened. So All right. <laughs> what's your take on this? Well, I think I know where you're going on that uh -huh. in reference. It had been amazing if uh, one of those cruise missiles would have hit the, the Dome of the Rock. Uh, you know, that would have been really uh, catastrophic yeah. for them, for sure. Uh, and if that would have happened, that could be one of the things that could could uh, precipitate the third temple coming in there. I mean, uh, that's what I'm thinking that you may be leading or going for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but again, I did see that video as well. I saw that one. I think uh, uh, I think was one of them flew over the Knesset as well. Uh, we were there a year ago and uh, we were literally right in front of the Knesset. I mean, it was amazing that it, some of those things made it that far, but they never actually hit Israel which was good. Uh, so is that where you're leading? Are you moving, leaning yeah. toward that as far as that video? That is exactly it. And, and, and I knew that you'd, you'd see that as well. That to mm -hmm. me, that's so significant, guys. Yes. Because uh, all it takes is for something to go astray. Or, yes. or depending on the exact location of something like that, okay? Mm -hmm. And it gets shot down, but... You got mm. stuff. You got stuff coming down, and the mm. stuff coming down. Boom, boom, <laughs> fire, fire. Okay, and wow. I mean, guys, this is incredible. When you got all, and that's just that little clip right there showing that. Right. And you see right. all those right there. That to me is incredible because we yeah. know. See, this is. It's great. You, we know that the third temple is going to be built. At Absolutely. Some point. It has to be built. It doesn't have to be built before the tribulation starts. Right. Right. It has to be right. built before the midpoint of the tribulation that we know. So um, but we know it's going to be built. Right. Yes. Well, could it be that this just kind of clears the ground, you mm. know, on the whole thing? I mean, yeah. what does Jordan because the country of Jordan has the um, has the the right as the, the right mm -hmm. as the guardianship of that right. area. Right? right. Right. Well, if you don't have anything there to guard any longer. Mm hmm. OK. You know, I, I personally believe that something has to happen for that third tip to come in there. Something has to happen to remove that. You know, now, you know, back in the past, I mean, some of the prophecy guys used to say, well, mm -hmm. there's a building called uh, it's called the Dome of Spirits. Uh, and they believe on the temple compound that uh, that they could put the, the third temple there. But uh, Israel would never allow the, the, the holy temple to be there with a desecration. And nor would Islam allow a holy temple of the Jews uh, there as well. Mm -hmm. So you got a problem. Uh, I do believe something's going to happen. Uh, I don't know what it's going to be that could that could do that. Uh, but something has to happen in order for that third temple uh, to come in. Now, again, with Hamas, that was one of the reasons why they went in. I think they really fear that something catastrophic is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And for them to attack Israel as one of those reasons uh, to set them back from, from uh, going forward with the third temple uh, is it, very telling. I mean, they are afraid of what's happening in Israel in reference to the temple uh, temple compound and 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 you know, what the Temple Institute is doing. Uh, I mean, that's, you know, amazing mm -hmm. to think about it. Mm -hmm. Something I believe will happen that will either re remove it or set it back. I mean, right now, believe it or not, the Israeli government has to protect the Dome of the Rock because they're concerned with war, you right. know. But you have some Jews that really want to do whatever they got to do to remove that. And and even of late, you've had, you've had uh, people that are now trying to go up on the Temple Mount to pray 
Uh, and, and every year is getting bigger. The crowds are getting bigger and bigger uh, as they are pushing it to try to get on the Temple Mount to pray. Uh, so, again, things are, are leading to some exciting times. But that's interesting video. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So I, di I didn't know if you had seen that yet or not. Yes, I did. But I did. Uh, that was amazing. But but uh, but man, I just thought, wow, that is really incredible, especially when you mix in with this. Son. And I know you know this, too, that um, Saudi Arabia has already said that the Temple Mount is of no consequence to Islam. Mm -hmm. OK, yes. where what is of consequence to Islam is there in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. OK. That because and see you've you've got the different the different factions there with uh, you know the the Sunnis and you've mm -hmm. got the Shiites okay yes and, yes and so uh, you've got Saudi Arabia saying look the whole focus of Islam it's not there on mm -hmm. in Jerusalem it is here what's that there you go there you go and it's right mm -hmm. there in Saudi Arabia and yes. so um, so already Saudi Arabia is all on board with this they're like. We don't care what God, the Jews want to build a temple there. We don't care. It doesn't mm. matter because it's mm. not significant anyhow. Yeah. Well, one thing for sure, we know that based on prophecy, the third temple will be there. That's right. Uh, the, the fact that brought is the fact that God has brought Israel back into world history is proof of the fulfillment of that prophecy. It's going to happen. You know, Israel came back into world history against all odds. Mm -hmm. You know, I have books uh, of, of old where, uh, you know, some of these prophecy guys of old, uh, they went on record before Israel was, was, was back into the land, and they stood on the authority of the word and said that Israel was going to come back into world history. Uh, not only that, uh, a good case in point was uh, the Schofield Bible. Uh, the Schofield Bible, uh, when, when, uh, when, when Schofield brought that Bible out, uh, he, he made uh, uh, allusions, not allusions, but he talked about that Russia was going to invade Israel at the time. And when he when he said that, many of the scholars of Scofield's day laughed at him. They said, you, "You're crazy." Uh, the Soviet Union. I mean, Russia is a is a uh, as an Orthodox Christian community. What what are you talking about? And then they said, "Israel is not even here." A right. uh, hundred years later, the Bible vindicated Scofield. Uh, Russia is is nowhere near uh, a Christian nation now, and now we have the nation of Israel. Uh, you know, so a lot of those Old Testament scholars, those men went on the authority of the word before Israel ever came back in the world history and the word of God vindicated them. So as God has brought this nation back into world history, uh, you can bank on it. It's going to happen. There will be a third temple there that the Antichrist will occupy, that he will desecrate based on scripture. So this is one reason why I mean, anytime I hear anything about the temple, I'm just so amazed. Uh, at what they are doing behind the scenes and and, and the multi millions of dollars they have spent uh, in restoring the temple and all of the furnishings and the and the and the, mm -hmm. and the priestly garments and different things like that. It's just amazing to witness this in our time. You know what I mean? It sure uh, it's exciting. I'll be honest with it you. It is. It is exciting, and it tells us that the time is is very near. Absolutely. Now, um, what has taken place? Some people wonder: Is this Ezek is this um, uh, Isaiah 17 from what happened a couple weeks ago? Is this uh, what just happened yesterday? Is this Ezekiel 38? Could you yeah. get some perspective on all of that? Yeah, how I, we know I don't that believe it is that. It, I don't believe that it is Ezekiel 38, 39. Now, again, it could be another catalyst uh, to that. You know, uh, there was a picture that went out in, I think, around 2018. You had Iran, Russia, and Turkey together uh, when, when those leaders took a took a photograph together mm -hmm. and, and many called that you know like it was it was a it, it was uh the the gog and Magog coalition coming together you know now i do believe that things are falling into place for the ezekiel ezekiel 30 39 war uh i do believe that israel has things in the land now that is of value to russia or to gog because the bible said when god goes into the land that he's coming in to take a spoil uh, I do believe that because God has allowed Israel to find uh, find the natural gas in the Gulf, uh, that is that is just dealing with Russia. Russia does not like that. Uh, not only that, because Israel now is uh, uh, their plans are to supply gas uh, to Europe, and Russia don't like that because no. Russia has been the supplier of gas and oil uh, to Europe, 
and now Israel is a threat to their economy. I believe that that is more more of one of those things that's going to draw the the Russian bear down into Israel to take a spoil. Uh, so I believe that what we're witnessing is just uh, let me say this: but I think it's it's the softening of the land in a sense. You know what I mean? It, it's getting things ready for preparation. Uh, but is it the actual Ezekiel thirty eight? No, not yet. Uh, you know, I have other colleagues that believe that again, this is part of the setup. Not what happened yesterday, but with Hamas and and Hezbollah, uh, those inner ring nations with Psalm eighty three war. You know, again, we're seeing those kind of things come together as well. So mm-hmm. you got a lot going on there, sure uh, and and I, I believe that this is just amazing times to watch. Uh, it's exciting to watch it, you know. But uh, you know, it's just speculation to say that it is. Uh, whether it's uh, Isaiah seventeen, we, we don't know. Uh, I mean, Damascus is still here, uh, but if uh, Iran continued to use them to lob missiles into Israel, uh, that prophecy could literally come to pass, you yeah. know? Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. By the way, everyone, um, so if you've got a question, um, we can get to a, we can get to a couple of you, probably a few questions here uh, this evening. And if you've got a question, would love just put question in all caps, please. Um, and and we'll see what we can get to uh, with those questions, uh, primarily based on the subject matter that we're talking about tonight. But uh, but go for it, guys. Go for it. You know, um, definitely would love to answer uh, those. And and by the way, while we're even waiting uh, for a couple of those to come on in, one of the things that I want to say is with Ezekiel uh, 38, the Gog Magog attack, is that it's a surprise attack. This was not a surprise attack. Right. Okay. <laughs> we also know that um, that Israel will not receive any help from any nation. Yes. According yes. to Ezekiel 38. Okay. Mm-hmm. Only God Himself will be there for her. Well, she yes. did receive help from nations here. So those are just two. There's there's more. But those Absolutely. are just two reasons how we know that this yes. is not Ezekiel 38. Uh, I love what you said there because uh, uh, God will get the glory. Amen. You know, I've said many times that I believe that eventually God is going to wean Israel off of the breast of America. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, America will not be a, not around, but I mean, not be uh, Israel's deliverer. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, when God delivered them from God, He's going to be a supernatural uh, deliverance, like mm-hmm. like a like a the old Bible days when God delivered Israel. You know, uh, right. God will get the glory uh, out of this deliverance mm-hmm. of, of nation of Israel based on Ezekiel 30, 39. Hmm. Hmm. That's awesome. That's all. Awesome. Okay, so we got Bobby Bobby Munt on here saying, "What's the sequence for Psalm eighty three and Ezekiel thirty eight wars and building the temple?" So the sequence of Psalm eighty three, uh, Ezekiel thirty eight, and building the temple. That's a lot there. That That's a, a loaded. Lot. That's a very loaded question. You know, uh, we really I, I can't give you the sequence. I mean, there are so many things, so many parts of that that's coming together. Uh, we know that we'll be witnessing with the temple. Uh, preparation, all that is falling into place. So uh, the temple is going to be here. We know that. Uh, we, uh, As I mentioned, uh, we're seeing the nations begin to come together uh, uh, for the uh, Ezekiel 30, 39 war. Uh, we look at, again, I talked about it in 2018 when when uh, Russia, Turkey, and Iran got together and they they formed in a, in a picture their alliance. You know, again, uh, those nations used to be enemies, but now they're coming together uh, and again, they're going to be used, we know, based on Ezekiel's prophecy. So we're seeing things, little, little bit of tidbits of things coming together, but it's not all there yet. Uh, the Psalm 83 war, now we do see the inner circle nations there. Uh, now, if you ask me, Brother Perkins, when do you think that these wars will come into place? I can't tell you. I don't know. Uh, I, I had a pastor one time had me uh, asked me to come in. He said, I want you to do a, do a message on when will Gog and Magog war take place? And I told him, I said, Pastor, I cannot do that. And I don't know a prophecy guy that can that can spell it out uh, that that you know that clear. Uh, right. We don't know. I mean, and I, I would be I would be uh, giving you conjecture to do that. I, I don't know. Uh, I really don't know. But I tell you one thing: we're seeing a lot of pieces coming together, and in a sovereign God's time, the puzzle will click in. Uh, you know, and then uh, you know, I will say this: as we see things getting closer. The picture does get clearer as we get closer to that's the end true. time. So that's the best way I can answer. I mean, that that was a very loaded question, a very good question. I'll be honest with you, yeah, but very loaded, very sure loaded. Is. 
So, so Don, like, I, I don't know, we're disappointed tonight. We thought that, that you were, <laughs> that you were, that you were kind of like a, a Johnny Carson. Rem oh, no. re re remember Karnak, Karnak yeah. Magnificent, right? Oh. We thought that you were Karnak the Magnificent. We had, we had you on me. We wanted those answers. We want to know exactly when, man. You know, I am forever a student and never an expert. I say that always. If you're always a student, you can you can always learn. You know what I mean. Amen. And you know, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful to be a student. You know, uh, I'm like you. I'm excited about what we are seeing, and uh, it's it's fascinating to uh, to watch it unfold. You know, but again, I'm still a student. I'm still learning. You know what I mean. Amen. Amen. No, I agree. That yeah. that was a great question. Very loaded question. And that Hamilton yes. has on here. What does the Lord? I think what she's trying to say is, what does the Lord? Uh, want me to look up uh to look for the rapture okay great question uh there's nothing you can look for to look for the rapture uh if you look at the signs of the times matthew 24 luke 21 mark 13 all of those signs wars and rumors of wars famines earthquakes uh uh in many places uh false christ all of those signs point to the literal return of christ which is the second coming of Christ in Revelation chapter 19. Uh, the rapture is a signless event. There are no signs for the rapture. You won't find a sign for the rapture. The rapture is an imminent event, meaning that it can happen at any time, at any moment. Now, I'll say this. I do believe that the urgency of the rapture is at hand because we're seeing signs that point to the second coming. And I'll give another little analogy I think might help her to understand a little better. Uh, in November, we know that Thanksgiving is near because we see signs of Christmas. You follow me? Uh, you know, in November, we see Christmas trees. You know, they get commercials already in November start advertising July, Christmas. July, we see Christmas yeah. trees. And <laughs> see, absolutely. We see, we see signs of Christmas. Uh, but we know that if we see signs of Christmas, we know that Thanksgiving is even nearer. That's right. And again, uh, we know that the rapture is even nearer as a signless event mm. because we're seeing signs that point to the second coming. So the rapture is a signless event. Uh, if anybody tell you that this event or that event has to happen before the rapture, they become date setters. Uh, you can't date set the rapture. The rapture is a signless event. We don't know when it's going to happen. Uh, we just know that it's an imminent event. And when it happens, we're going to know that it's happening. We, we're being caught up, you know. So and, and, don't let anybody tell you that this event has to happen or that event has to happen. Uh, again, as I'm going to keep reiterating while the time lasts here, that as we see those indicators that point to the coming of Christ, it lets us know that the, that the church age, the dispensation of the church is at hand to be raptured, which is going to literally take us out, take us out of here. Uh, so it, it's close. I mean, I I, I say before I take rapture jerseys at times. You know, I'm looking up. <laughs> That's right. You know, because yeah, we did, I believe. We, I, think, I think it was last week we did rapture practice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love it, brother, because yeah. I believe that it is at hand. Praise so, the Lord. So uh, if I can encourage that that uh, viewer there, uh, just allow God to use you to reach reach the harvest. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's see, and we'll we'll get to you in just a moment. Go for it. You know what, Ramon? Ramon, Ramon has been so anxious. He's been waiting. So go for it, Ramon. Go ahead. Next. Hi, Don. I mean, I got three hundred questions, but let me ask. Oh one. boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Well, first of all, thank you for being here tonight. Secondly, we're not disappointed of you. <laughs> this is lying. <laughs> God be the glory. <laughs> and another thought, I. I could not agree more with you that it is what's happening right now is simply a catalyst. Because Absolutely. you look at Ezekiel 38, obviously Gog and Magog will be leading the whole game. Yes. And yeah, so there, we have to look at every detail of the... Now, I'm going to shoot my question from a long-range standpoint. And okay. We're talking about the, the day of the Lord. I'm trying to understand in the appropriateness of putting together Matthew 25 goats and sheep mm -hmm. separation. Yes. I believe verse 30, 31 and following. Mm -hmm. Yes. How do can I put it in parallel with Joel 3, Valley of Jehoshaphat, the mm -hmm. Valley of Decision, mm -hmm. when the Lord is going to come down and again, Ze Zechariah 14 as well, mm -hmm. when he steps down in the Mount of Olives, Mount of Olives is going to split east to west, 
north to south, what have you. So is that something I can reconcile together as a, as a parallel event? And secondly, where do I put it in the seven tribulation schedule, okay. if I may use that word? Okay, uh, that's a very good question. And I, I do believe in reference to that goat and sheep nation judgment. Uh, uh, I do believe that it is directly after the battle of Armageddon, uh, which is uh, after the great tribulation. Uh, and if I can, uh, they'll bring it to a full screen. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring in my prophecy chart, and I think it's going to help us a little bit, a little bit better. And, and I'll show you perspective where I believe it is. Okay, so I'm going to bring in our prophecy chart. And, uh, okay, we are currently in the church age. Okay, and as I shared earlier, what's going to remove the church is that event called the rapture of the church. Then you have the seven year of great tribulation that would take place. Okay. Now, here at the close of the tribulation, you have the second coming of Christ. This is when Christ comes back as a man of war. Uh, he's going to judge the Antichrist and his forces. And as a result of this judgment, you have the Battle of Armageddon. Okay. Now, the Battle of Armageddon will take place here. Uh, but Christ is coming back at this time to set up his government. And at this point is where the goat and sheep nation judgment of Matthew Trump, chapter 25 takes place. Uh, this 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 follows right into with with the war of Armageddon that's going to take place there. Christ, the Bible said, the nations will literally come before Christ at this time. I'm gonna come back to the screen. Uh, Christ will uh, he he. The Bible said that the nations will literally be set in front of him. He he will put the goat nations on the left and the sheep nations on the right. Uh, the goat nations he will judge, and the sheep nations will be allowed into the millennial kingdom. So I do believe that it's going to take place. At the end of tribulation, at the second coming of Christ, mm -hmm. at the battle of Armageddon. Now, I hope I heard your question correctly, uh, but but this is how I I see uh, the judgment of the golden sheep nation, sheep nation will be played out uh, during that time. Uh, is that where you were going? Yeah, and and I'm just trying to see if I could really reconcile it as being appropriate to put them all together as a parallel uh, references. Well, I do believe you can there. Uh, but again, as far as that event happening, it's going to happen right there. You know, uh, I've said many times, too, that at this, at this judgment here, when Christ judged the nations and then he judged the goat nations and then the sheep nations are allowed into the millennium, you know, I believe that when that event takes place, that those sheep nations, I believe they'll be all born again because I believe he's going to start the millennium off uh, uh, with all righteous. Uh, but he put a thousand-year time, thousand time limit on it uh, because he still have to deal with the sin nature. Uh, those sheep nations that's going to be allowed into the millennial kingdom, uh, they're going to still have babies that are born with sin, right. and therefore he's going to judge them. So the timing of that event uh, with, the, with, the, uh, with the Armageddon, uh, you know, it's going to be right there in between the, 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 the tribulation and the millennial kingdom. And I do believe that it, you, can, you, can, you can tie all those verses in right there to, to make it all fit. Right. Could it could it be the forty five days that we're talking about that's added in the twelve ninety and thirteen thirty? Well, yes, could could very well be during that time as well. Um, now I'll say this: it's just like uh, when the church is raptured. When will the tribulation begin? Okay, so among scholars, you know, it doesn't mean that when the tribulation, I mean, when the rapture take place, that immediately the tribulation is going to take place. I believe that there may be some time in between the actual tribulation beginning. Now, at the end of the tribulation might be a little bit different because of Daniel's prophecy. Yeah, and it right. could actually happen, as you just shared, you know, at that at that point there. But I do know that there will be a time to, you know, to purify the land and, and what Christ is going to do as he comes in to set up his millennial kingdom. Now, again, that's just thought. I mean, a lot of people have different views on that. Um, uh, it's exciting, again, as a student of prophecy to look at that. You know, a lot of scholars got different views on that. And uh, I think we'll, we'll know for sure. Uh, when we step into glory, uh, how God's going to work it all out. Because I know once I'm raptured, man, I got some questions I'm going to ask the Lord. You know, Lord, how how will, the, how will all this play out? You know, how will it, how are you going to do that? You know what I mean? Uh, and, and I, you know, Paul said here, we know, we know in part, but there we would know all in all, you know. And uh, I, I'll tell you this too, my friend, that, you know, there's some things that we don't have answers on. And uh, I, I don't sweat it on those answers, you know. I, I don't really sweat it. I just say, well, God, 
I don't know how you're going to do that, but I know you, you're going to work it out and I'm going to trust you. Uh, the areas where God is silent, I'm not silent, uh, where God is clear on, uh, we can be very, very dogmatic about it. You know, I do believe that there will be a literal second coming of Christ. We know that, you know, that's dogma. You could be, I can be dogmatic about that. But in reference to some of the timing, you know, it's kind of hard to to lock those things down. And I challenge Christians all the time, you know, don't 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 let it unravel you as far as getting clarity on some things. Uh, the, the things where God is clear on, you can you can stand firm on those things, you know, Uh when will God can make a war take place? I can't tell you that. I don't know. You know what I mean? Uh, when will, you know, but I can tell you when Armageddon is going to take place. It's going to happen directly after the second coming. That is clear in prophecy. You follow me? That's yeah. right. That's Thank right. You. And when we're talking yeah. about the goat nations and the sheep mm -hmm. nations, it, yes. what is the deciding factor? Interesting. Based on the, the, the question that you're asking, even based on what we've been talking about predominantly tonight is what they do with Israel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. But but I also believe that they're going to be born again. I believe I believe uh, he's going to start off the millennium with all righteous believers, but they will still have um, uh, have the sin nature. That's one reason why God put a time limit on it. You know, people wonder well, why. You know, why why would God do that? And then people even wonder why would people sin in the millennium when Christ is there, because the sin nature will still be there. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. By the way, I don't know. There is somebody that is on the chat that is that is giving answers in my name. I don't mm. know who has the ability to do that back there, but um, uh, he's hijacked me and is answering people on there like one of our moderators. Um, mm. So uh, uh, the fake news. Don't believe. Don't believe anything. <laughs> don't believe. Don't believe. They got their little thing going on here. Okay. So um, uh, my questions are disappearing. It's a, it's crazy what's happening on here. Um, they were there and then they're just they're they're disappearing. All right. Let me. Okay. Here we go. So let me see here. Question. Watchman's Post asking question. How is uh, Gog Magog? a surprise invasion when the merchants of Tarshish, uh, young lion, Sheba, Dedan, see them assemble and inquire of their intentions. I'm going to let you answer that one, Pastor. That's, <laughs> 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 That's a great question. Great, That's great a, question. That is a great question. How is Gog Magog a surprise invasion when the merchants of Tarshish, young lion, Sheba, and Eden? You know what? Let's turn there. Okay, let's go here to verse 10. So thus says the Lord God on that day, it shall come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind and you will make an evil plan. You will say, I will go up against the land of unwalled villages. I will go to a peaceful people who dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. So there's a sense of security there at that time. In fact, uh, uh, my personal opinion is that's eventually what some of these wars um, that we're talking about here will, uh, will lead into. But um, you will say that I will go up against a, a land of unwalled villages. I will go to peaceful people who dwell safely all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates to take plunder and to take booty to stretch out your hand against the waste places that are against uh, that are again inhabited and against a people gathered from the nations who have acquired livestock and goods and dwell in the midst of the land Sheba and Dedan the merchants of Tarshish and all their young lions will say to you have you come to take plunder have you gathered your army to take booty, to carry away silver and gold, to take away livestock and goods, and to take great plunder. Uh, well, I, you know, this is just my opinion on, uh, on that. That's a great question, um, yes. by the way, a fantastic question. I yes. believe that they're saying that as they're seeing it unfold, as they are mm -hmm. seeing it happen in real time, things are going to move fast. Things are going to move quickly. Um, there's not going to be the, uh, like, a, like what we've seen happen with this situation. In fact, we were told 
before this kind of 48 window hap- 48 hour window happened that there was a, a little window before that as well and then that that had expired okay and then there was this bit of a window and then boom this attack had happened um, that we've all been talking about tonight the attack from yesterday but I believe from how I read that that they're going to see not that they're going to have the knowledge of what's coming but that they see in real time as it's happening boom and you have come uh, to do this very thing. So what would be your thoughts on that, Don? Well, um, again, that's, I mean, that was a great question there too. And, you know, uh, again, how the question was, was worded is like, they do see it in advance. Uh, so again, I mean, uh, it's one of the ones I'm gonna have to conf- uh, refer to you on that one. I'll be honest with you. I never really looked at it uh, like that. And uh, again, great question. Great question. Great question. So, <laughs> So that is that is uh, just on the fly the best I've never heard that question. So that yeah, I never had either. That's, that, a good that's one. really good. That's, Very good. That's, that's 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 great. That's great. So fantastic. All right. Um, so do we have time here? Uh, let me see if I've got another one on here. We had some, and like I said, unfortunately, um, something went wrong on my screen here. Uh, it couldn't possibly be user error. So, <laughs> okay, here we go. Do we got time for one more question, Don? Sure, okay. sure. So Asset Ministries, hey, Asset Ministries, good to see you guys tonight. Uh, question, how could they possibly sacrifice the red heifers when Numbers 19.4 says that the priest has to sprinkle the blood in front of the tabernacle seven times? It is, an, it is a generational command. Well, I believe that God is going to allow them to do what they have to do. Now, we do know based on scripture that there really is no power in the temple. Uh, Christ was the last lamb slain. Uh, And right now, Israel as a whole, I mean, they don't honor Christ as their Messiah. So they are looking for a third temple. Uh, They are looking for uh, the ashes of red heifer. So, again, I believe that things are going to fall into place where they can do that, Uh, uh, you know, whether the temple is here or not. I mean, I do believe things going to uh, happen to allow them to do that. But we know that there really is no biblical significance in reference to what's going to happen there. You, you follow me? Yep. Uh, although they're very strict as to what they're doing to follow the Mosaic law uh, based on, on Numbers 19. So I, I really don't know how all that's going to play out. Uh, I do know that God is allowing uh, the temple uh, furnishings and, and, and the garments and the priests to be trained uh, and, and the red heavens, God is allowing all those things to come into view as preparation. Now, how all is going to work out, I can't give you an answer on that. But I, I tell you this, we're living in a time now that no other generation has seen in the, in the preparation for the restored third temple that the prophecies talk about that the Antichrist will occupy and desecrate. So that's the best way I can answer that. If I can just add uh, just a little bit yes. to this as well, yes. um, and it's just a thread that I've, I'm just kind of starting to chew on a little bit. Um, uh, Pastor Tom had said something, and I was going to ask him and, and really ask him about this the other day, and then mm-hmm. there were some schedule changes, and so he wasn't able to be on the program um, like we had intended for this past Thursday, so we're going to have him back on at another date. But um, he had said something recently, which is very interesting. So when you're reading in Numbers 19, the timeline of Numbers 19, was that during the first temple period or was was that during the tabernacle period? Was during the tabernacle. We know Mm -hmm. that. The temple wasn't around in in Numbers 19. That was during the tabernacle period. Right. Okay. Good point. So when they had done that, all right, that was originally done there in, would have been done uh, in Shiloh. That's where the, mm-hmm. where the tabernacle, tabernacle was. In fact, we have found evidence of that. In fact, it's interesting because if you go there, you can see, I've seen the, the photos of it, the measurements of it, from what I understand, are perfect and spot on. You can literally stand in the exact place mm. uh, that the um, um, uh, Ark of the Covenant rested right there in child. I don't mm. know if you've seen that or, or been there, on mm-hmm. but uh, i've seen the photo that's incredible so yes uh, so i think it's interesting because there's nothing and again there, this this is all just 
what I'm about to say would be speculation, okay? Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. nothing to say that they could not build something temporary like the tabernacle yes. right now before, yes. or before they build something permanent like the temple that we know yes. will come. Now, That's a good if, point. And, and if they build the tabernacle, okay? Right, right, right. And if they build the tabernacle, okay, and they've already got... Um, uh, I think I think the number is actually three, but maybe maybe it is four uh, uh, qualified red heifers right now, whichever it is. All they need is one. Anyhow. OK, right. boom, there you go. And you can have that and you don't have to have the temple at this point. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good point. Good point. So I, I think it's I think it's fascinating. There's there's, you know, maybe some what ifs uh, there. But uh, this is definitely within the realm of something that, that, that could happen. And yeah. we already know uh, where the tabernacle was. And we know that that scripture right there was during the time, the period of the tabernacle, not the period right. of the tabernacle. Good temple. point. Good so, point. Um, anyhow, just a, a, a thought on there um, for everyone. So, all right. Well, hey, Don, why don't you uh, thank you so much. It is always so awesome to have you join. I love the discussion uh, that we get to have. And Amen. Uh, you are just such a, a wonderful brother. Um, so well, thankful for you. Well, well Curtis, I honor and a privilege uh, to be with you. And again, uh, you know, if I can make a little small little, little announcement on the end here, uh, we do have a website. Can I pull into yes. the screen for a second just Please to close do. with that, if you don't mind? Please do. Uh, uh, we have our website uh, coming to the screen now, www.according2prophecy.org. Uh, we're also part of the social media platforms out there and we have a weekly program that airs on his channel uh, our program is called your future in bible prophecy and again uh, they can reach out to us there if they want to but uh, uh it's always an honor and a privilege to be with you kurt uh, i never take for granted uh, this time and uh again i'm just honored that you would have me and uh thank god for the questions everybody that that asked them and uh i just pray that god bless you and hopefully we helped a little uh, 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 tonight in, in answer some of the questions. Yes. Yes. And thank you. And we do have, we, uh, we have, uh, information uh, again, how you can connect with, uh, with Don in the description section of the video as well. Don, yes. will you close us out, um, uh, with just the gospel, uh, man, Amen. We, man, people need Jesus. And so Absolutely. You just, and you're an evangelist, bro. <clears throat> Amen. And you're an evangelist. Well, I'm a, I'm a, Share I'm the gospel with this. some hope. Yeah, I'm going to close this prayer to where I close our TV program every every week. Uh, the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, Amen. they shall be saved. Amen. Salvation is so easy. It's simple. All you got to do is receive the gift of salvation. Salvation, nothing you can do. You can't work for it. You can't pay for it. You can't buy it. It's a free gift. And uh, as people are watching and, and, and those that are seeing the events that are transpiring, it is letting us know that time is at hand. So I want to encourage you, if you're watching, you're not born again, today is the accepted day and time for you to receive, receive Christ. While there's breath in your lungs, you can receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And again, uh, if you're born again as a Christian, allow what you've heard and, and what you studied regarding the end times, allow it to motivate you to go after the harvest. And the Word of God commands us to pray for those, uh, and to pray to the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into that harvest. So if I can, I want to just close with a little simple prayer, and then I'm going to turn it back over to, uh, to you, Pastor. Uh, Father, we love you. We thank you for this wonderful time of study. And, Lord, I just pray to God that we've shared something tonight that will stir the hearts of those that are viewing. Lord, let these times change us, oh God. Let it motivate us to do what you called us all to do. Mm -hmm. And, Lord, if there's anyone here that's not saved tonight, Lord, I pray to God that they cry out to you. And, Lord, that they accept you as their Lord and Savior. And, Lord, you will save them tonight. And, Lord, you give them peace going forward. Now, we honor you, we glorify, and we thank you for this opportunity to share your word uh, with a world uh, that needs it. And we love you now in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Pastor. Amen. The Lord bless you exceedingly, my friend. God thank bless. You. God bless. Bless you, you as soon. well.